Tiefling, the favorite race of edge lords and deviant artists everywhere. Tiefling are inspired by Nephilim from Abrahamic holy texts. Nephilim can either be half angels or half demons, and Tiefling are representing, well, it's pretty apparent, right? Tiefling actually have a lot of different variants that you can go into with their race, so this might make for a pretty long video. So buckle up, uh, I'm gonna go on ahead and put a timestamp in the description below so that you guys can skip around. Uh, if you just click on the timeline, you should see that it's actually split up into different chapters. So you can skip around if there's a specific, you know, Tiefling variant you wanna check out. There you go. And then my racing class synergy ratings and all that will be probably somewhere over in, how's my webcam? Okay, yeah, somewhere over in this area. Let's get into that, and I've got some new additions that I've actually made to the racing class synergy table. So we'll talk about that whenever we get over there, but let's start out with the base Tiefling. So whenever Tiefling was initially released in the player's handbook, Wizards of the Coast got a lot of feedback that players felt that Tiefling was just like really performing under par compared to any other race option. But now we have just so many different variants, and uh, yeah, we will, we will get into that. So starting out with their traits, I have marked their ability score increase as orange uh, because the synergy is just not really great for most builds. Uh, so your intelligence score increases by one and your charisma score increases by two. Two really weak saves. The, the thing is that this really does pigeonhole you into a few certain builds. You know, we're talking like Bard, Sorcerer, Warlock, Paladin. Uh, uh, I mean, you want to roll up a charismatic face fighter or something like that, sure, you, you know, you can totally do that. But as far as Adventurers League play, Tiefling just doesn't get a lot of love, uh, just because the synergy is just not really that fantastic. Their size, Tieflings are medium-sized. Speed, you get a base walking speed of 30 feet, so totally average there. They get the standard Dark Vision, which, fantastic. They get Hellish Resistance, which, I think this right here, Wizards of the Coast must have been looking at their ability score increase and been like, this is going to be so good that we have to make this to where it's not just perfect for every single class. Uh, so you have resistance to fire damage, the most common magic damage type in the game. Infernal Legacy, uh, I've marked this as purple because I feel like the other two spells that they get instead of Thaumaturgy are enough to bring this up. Thaumaturgy is very much mostly a ribbon kind of roleplay cantrip. It's, it's decent at what it does, but honestly, you can just look at this as religious prestidigitation, but like, even prestidigitation offers a lot more like mechanical benefits than Thaumaturgy does. So this is purely a shenanigan spell, really. Uh, Hellish Rebuke, I don't think I've ever covered this one on here. So, Hellish Rebuke, I marked as purple. I think that this spell is absolutely fantastic, especially for the fact that they cast this at second level once per long rest. Uh, as a reaction, and it's instantaneous, you point your finger and allow the creature... Oh, and the creature that damaged you is momentarily surrounded by Hellish Flames. The creature must make a dexterity saving throw. It takes 2d10 fire damage on a failed save, or half as much damage on a successful one, and because you're casting this at second level, it's actually 3d10 fire damage that they take. So this can be used at range. If something does actually damage you from range, you can use your reaction to do that, which you can't always do with an opportunity attack. Darkness is a fantastic environmental anti-mage spell. Because a lot of things, if they're not able to see you, can't actually target you with the spell. If you're able to cast this in a way that blocks off the mage's sight, this is... Awesome, awesome, awesome. For up to 60 feet, casting time in one action and for a duration of 10 minutes that requires your concentration, it's a 15-foot radius sphere of magical darkness. A creature with dark vision can't see through the darkness, and non-magical light can't illuminate it. If the point you choose is on an object you are holding or one that isn't being worn or carried, the darkness emanates from the object and moves with it, completely covering the, the source of the darkness with an opaque object, such as a bowl, helm, or blocks of darkness. If any of the spell's area overlaps with an area of light created by a spell second level or lower, the spell that created the light is dispelled. So, Darkness, I think this is really more effective. If you're casting this not directly on to the spellcaster that you're trying to, you know, take, make less effective, uh, actually cast this to where they are just out of the radius and put this darkness in between you and them. And that way, they're going to have to use their full, like, 30 feet of movement to get through it in order to really do anything. And in that case, they don't really know like exactly what they're targeting, where they're going for. It changes their uh, it changes their field of view. This is really effective at doing that, and I think darkness is a great spell, made even better by the fact that you just straight up get to do this once per long rest. And then for languages, you get common and infernal. So overall, 
Uh, Tiefling, the Detect Valance guys actually give this a 23, and I, I actually agree with that. So the Detect Valance guys give Tiefling a 23. I'm, I very, very much agree with that. So that's just the Tiefling, and let's look at the Variants real quick before we get into the uh, Feral Tiefling. So for the Variant Tiefling, if you go Devil's Tongue, you get the Vicious Mockery Cantrip instead of Thaumaturgy. So the thing must succeed on a Wisdom Saving Throw or take 1d4 Psychic Damage and have disadvantage on the next attack roll it makes before the end of its next turn. Vicious Mockery is just, it's a hilarious cantrip. Uh, in psychic Damage, not many things actually have resistance to Psychic Damage, uh, except for, we'll say, you know, Constructs. Uh, and then, like, you know, Mind Flayers, more psionic enemies. Uh, this also scales up with you, whereas Thaumaturgy, once you get it, you just have those effects that you can do out of combat stuff with. So, yeah. So, in addition, instead of Hellish Rebuke, you get Charm Person. Charm Person is, we all know it, it it's just a fantastic first level face spell. This is really good for going into dungeons, trying to get more information out of some of the minions that are in there. You know, you go up against, like, how common are goblins and kobolds going to be in a campaign? Here's Charm Person for you. It, like, this is going to help you get passwords or maybe avoid traps. It's a really fantastic social spell. Uh, it can also get you out of trouble, like, in a, let's say, in a town. If you just convince two guards to let you through, you know, for a duration of one hour. This is pretty effective, I'm not going to lie. Uh, you do get to cast this at second level, so it's not just one creature, it's two. So, Charm Person, second level, once per day. Pretty great. In Thrall, you have a distracting string of words, causing creatures of your choice that you can see within range, and that can hear you to make a wisdom saving throw. Any creature that can't be charmed succeeds on the saving throw automatically, and if your companions are fighting a creature, it has advantage on the save. On a failed save, the target has this advantage on wisdom perception checks, made to perceive any creature other than you until the spell ends, or until the target can no longer hear you. The spell ends if you're incapacitated or can no longer speak. So you can help out your buddies that are trying to stealth around, and uh, it's, it feels like it wants to be a taunt, but I just don't think it's that great at doing it. But overall, I would say Devil's Tongue, getting rid of Thaumaturgy, and I think Charm Person is a fair enough trade for Hellish Rebuke, uh, this shouldn't, you shouldn't overlook this. So Hellfire, I have marked this as orange. I think this is actually a weaker replacement to Hellish Rebuke. Uh, as a, so you get to cast Burning Hands as a second level spell. It does 46 fire damage at this point. However, it requires your action. It is in a cone. But I honestly think I would rather take Hellish Rebuke and give me more stuff I can do with my reaction than I would take Hellfire. You know, like I... It's not that Burning Hands is bad, I just feel like I would rather have Hellish Rebuke than Hellfire, especially, like, once per day as a second-level spell. And that's a really, really scary reaction that you're getting right there. Winged, you have bat-like wings that sprout from your shoulder blades, you have a flying speed of 30 feet while you aren't wearing heavy armor, and this, place replaces, and this trait replaces the Infernal Legacy trait. So, flying speed. If it's a flying speed of 30 feet, that's less abusable, because Eric Hocker gets 50 feet, which... You can do that at early levels to completely cheese a lot of encounters. So here, 30 feet, uh, if you do that whole grapple setup and drop thing, they're taking like 1d6 bludgeoning damage and they're automatically knocked prone. That's good, but uh, I, I think there's just a lot more that you can actually get out of your turn than just that. So yeah, Winged, I, I'd say that this is the way that wizards, if they're going to keep giving races access to a flying speed, they should probably limit it to like 20 or 30 feet at most, at most. So in the Swords Coast Adventurer's Guide, we got the Feral Tiefling. The Feral Tiefling, its ability score increases significantly better than what the base Tiefling gets. Your intelligence score increases by one, and your dexterity score increases by two. So your dexterity score, it's not just for a lot of builds can use this a lot more. It's not just for the fact that you're now getting a mental and a physical uh, ability score increase. But dexterity is extremely common factoring into armor class, into initiative, into stealth, sleight of hand, and acrobatics checks. Like, into a lot of tool checks as well. So everything else is effectively the same. Uh, the tech balance only, this really only increases their rating by two. So, yeah, uh, Feral Tiefling, I think, is a great, great, great starting point for where the Tiefling really should have been. So going through here for the ones that are in Morgan Cannon's Tome of Foes, uh, first we have the Valsable Tiefling. I'm probably going to mispronounce a few of these. So, The crumbling realm of Maladomini is ruled by Valsable, who excels at corrupting those whose minor sins can be transformed into acts of damnation. Tieflings linked to this arc devil can corrupt others both physically and psychically. I'm going to just gonna spot real quick where the major changes are. Uh, so their ability score increases the same. They get Thaumaturgy, and then they get Ray of Sickness. 
Ray of Sickness, this is dealing poison damage. Uh, poison damage just can't keep up with the other damage types in the game. Uh, I would so much rather have Hellish Rebuke. I mark this as orange because I'm like, this is way, way, way worse than Hellish Rebuke. Uh, it's, Ray of Sickness is just not that great of a spell. Crown of Madness kind of redeems it. Um, yeah, I think I would rather have Darkness, but this is still kind of cool. One humanoid of your choice that you can see within range, uh, so 120 feet, must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or become charmed by you for the duration. While the target's charmed in this way, a twisted crown of jagged iron appears on its head and a madness glows in its eyes. The charmed target must use its action before moving on each of its turns to make a melee attack against the creature other than itself that you mentally choose. The target can act normally on its turn if you choose no creature or if none are within its reach. On your subsequent turns, you must use your action to maintain control over the target or the spell ends. Also, the target can make a wisdom saving throw at the end of each of its turns. On a success, the spell ends. It is still in control of its movement, so if, it's know if it knows that it's under this kind of effect, then, like, why is it going to move closer to its buddies? Uh, I, I think Crown of Madness, a DM that really knows how to play this out uh, and, and knows what this spell can do, if it's any kind of creature that has an intelligence higher than, like, 8, is likely going to avoid putting this thing any closer to its buddies. So yeah, Crown of Madness, I, most I can give it as blue, is honestly probably closer to green. Um, Balzable just doesn't really get a whole lot of love here. This Fader. So the great city of Vis occupies most of Hell's second layer. It is a place where secrets are uncovered and shared with the highest bidder, making tieflings tied to this Fader excellent spies and infiltrators. Ability score increase. Your charisma score increases by 2, and your dexterity score increases by 1. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is so, so good. Oh, Bard loves, loves, loves this uh, sub-race. Legacy of Deist. You know the Thaumaturgy cantrip? When you reach third level, you can cast a Disguise Self spell once with this trait and regain the ability to do so when you finish a long rest. Good, because that's about all you really need to cast Disguise Self with. Um, let me try and get this better up on the screen for you guys. Uh, 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 okay, there you go. Uh, this is such, such a great uh, face kind of a spell. Uh, great for infiltration. It totally makes sense into why they got it. The description is just a little bit long, so I'm not really going to read all of these, but you guys can pause it and take a look at it. Uh, Disguise Self, just fantastic, great face infiltration spell. They also get Detect Thoughts at 5th level. Again, same thing, amazing for information gathering. Uh, it's very rare that something is really going to be able to, to overcome this. Uh, Detect Thoughts is just fantastic, fantastic for them to get. Uh, overall, though, would I have taken these over, like, Hellish Rebuke and Darkness? I, I think there's a fair argument to be made that certain builds would really benefit more from both of these spells. The Fierna Tiefling, a master manipulator, Fierna grants Tieflings tied to her forceful personalities. Your Charisma score increases by 2, and your Wisdom score increases by 1. At least you're getting the boost to a very common strong save. You know the Friends Cantrip instead of Thaumaturgy? I would rather take Friends over Thaumaturgy, even despite Friends not being all that great. Casting time on one action, and for that minute, while you're maintaining your concentration, you have advantage on all charisma checks directed at one creature of your choice that isn't hostile towards you. When the spell ends, the creature realizes that you use your magic to influence its mood and becomes hostile towards you. A creature prone to violence might attack you. Another creature might seek retribution in other ways, as at the DM's discretion, depending on the nature of your interaction with it. So, friends, I mean, I guess you can come up with some ways in which this could be useful, so that's why I've given it blue. You know, you want to start a bar fight, but, like, you don't want to be the guy that struck first. I guess friends really works out. But, like, that's, that's like, one specific kind of situation, you know. I think in some situations you can make it good. But, yeah, so, like, given it blue, it's probably likely green. So they're also getting Charm Person. I talked about that a little bit earlier. I, I, I think that's a reasonable replacement to Hellish Rebuke. And then you get Suggestion, which essentially just kind of, like, mentally command someone to be under your, like, command for about eight hours unless they do a certain action that you have told them to do. Uh, suggestion, it lasts longer than Charm Person. It's, it's slightly more flexible, I guess, than Charm Person. Uh, but taking it over Darkness, yeah, if you're rolling up a face, I can definitely see why you would take Suggestion over Darkness. So I think the Glaseid Tiefling is possibly my second favorite in all the ones that came to us in Morgan Kynes Tome of Foes. Your ability score increased, your charisma score increases by 2, and your dexterity score increases by 1. Legacy of Malvage, you know the minor illusion cantrip, I would so, so, so much rather have this 
over thaumaturgy. Uh, I won't get into the whole thing because it's a pretty lengthy description, but Minor Illusion is incredibly flexible. I love this cantrip. It just it, no questions asked. I'll take this over thaumaturgy or Vicious Mockery. Yeah. When you reach third level, you also get the Disguise Self spell. And then once you reach fifth level, you get Invisibility. Amazing, amazing. Not only can it be cast on you, it can be cast on a buddy while you're doing this. The only thing you really can't do is attack or cast a spell. But what that means you can do is you can give your buddies, like, help them with the health action. You can use the use an object action. You can cast invisibility and go administer a potion, try to stabilize a buddy. Like, invisibility is so amazing as long as all you're doing is just non-combat centric stuff. Great spell. Great spell. The Levistus Tiefling. This right here, this is my favorite. My absolute favorite of all the ones that we get. Frozen Stygia is ruled by Levistus, an archdevil known for offering bargains to those who face an inescapable doom. Ability score increase. Your charisma score increases by 2, and your constitution score increases by 1. Legacy of Stygia. You know the Ray of Frost cantrip. I love this spell. Cold damage like resistance isn't super common. A frigid beam of blue-white light streaks toward a creature within range, so a range of 60 feet. Make a ranged spell attack against the target. On a hit, it takes 1d8 cold damage, and its speed is reduced by 10 until the start of your next turn. Uh, and then, at third level, you can cast Armor of Agathus as a second level spell. Armor of Agathus is one of the coolest first level spells, and I don't hear enough love for this thing. You gain five temporary hit points for the duration. If a creature hits you with a melee attack while you have these hit points, the creature takes five cold damage. This is so, so good. But the way that this works is say something hits you and it only deals three damage, like it rolls really low, it's still going to take five cold damage, and you're still going to have two temporary hit points. If something else hits you with a melee attack, it also takes five cold damage, and then you lose those temporary hit points. However, for the Levistus Tiefling, they're able to cast this at a second level once per day. That gives you 10 temporary hit points and the damage increases by 10. Armor of Agathus is so, so good. I love this spell. It's made even better by the fact that you just get it once per day. And quite honestly, it might be even good enough for you to take in your class. Like, if you go Paladin with this, or I, I'm trying to remember if Paladin gets it, uh, or if you go Warlock and you want to go Hexblade, it's worth it to still have. Like, oh, it's so good. Uh, and then you get the Darkness spell whenever you reach 5th level. I, I, I just love Levistus Tiefling. I think it might be my favorite of all the Tieflings. Yeah, I, I just I just absolutely love the Levistus Tiefling, especially, like, the cold, uh, the, like, cold hell kind of Tiefling. I, don't, I, I just really dig that. Mammon Tiefling. Uh, the great miser Mammon loves coins above all else. Tieflings tied to him excel at gathering and safeguarding wealth. So, uh, the ability score increase, your charisma score increases by 2, and your intelligence score increases by 1, same as the base tiefling. So, Legacy of Minaras, you know the Mage Hand cantrip, which I've already said before, this is just the, the greatest utility cantrip in D&D. And then, at 3rd level, you get Tensor's Floating Disc. Um, honestly, enough campaigns get a bag of holding to where I don't feel like Tensor's Floating Disc is all that great. There might be some situations where Tensor's Floating Disc comes in handy, like for a, a puzzle where you need to, like, you know, put so much weight on it, uh, and it's unreasonable for you to be able to carry, like, over 200 pounds or something like that. Um, Tensor's Floating Disc, I think, could be made good, but for the most part, I think it's mostly a ribbon. That comes down to the fact that it only lasts for an hour, really. Uh, it only lasts for an hour, and it's already so, like, specific in its restrictions. Tensor's Floating Disc, I think, is just kind of blah. And then at fifth level, you can cast the Arcane Lock spell, if you're doing a lot of roleplay, a lot of home building in your campaign, this could be, uh, very reasonably be a purple. Uh, Arcane Lock, though, like, if you get this, you're trying to shut a door behind you and prevent, like, I don't know, attacking enemies from getting into that room. You can cast Arcane Lock onto the door and hopefully, like, bar yourself in. This could be cool in some dungeon delving scenarios. You might be able to say that Arcane Lock could, like, be a mimic detector, because, like, you touch a closed door, well, no, you have to touch it. So, yeah, um, no, never mind, that's a bad point. Mephistopheles Tiefling. In the frozen realm of Kenya, Mephistopheles offers arcane powers to those who entreat with him. Tieflings linked to him master some arcane magic. So, same thing as the base Tiefling, charisma and intelligence. Legacy of Kenya, you know, the Mage Hand cantrip. 
Whenever you reach third level, you can cast the Burning Hand spell as a second level spell. And then at fifth level, you can get Flame Blade. Flame Blade, it looks really cool on paper. Uh, however, whenever you realize that you can't add your spellcasting ability modifier to it, uh, the fact that it does require your concentration and you are making melee attacks with this, uh, Flame Blade is just kind of meh. Um, yeah, sure, it, it sheds bright light in a 10-foot radius and dim light for an additional 10 feet. So does a torch. Like, <laughs> I mean, Flame Blade, I just don't think it's all that great, honestly. Okay, so the Zerial Tiefling. Ability score increase. Your Charisma score increases by 2, and your Strength score increases by 1. This is good for Paladin, and... Yeah. <laughs> like, and there are two weak saves. And it, it's hyper-focused on Paladin, so much so that it's just screaming at you, like, if you don't build Paladin, this is... Yeah, whatever. Uh, Legacy of Avernus, you know the Thaumaturgy cantrip. When you reach third level, you can cast a Searing Smite spell as a second level spell. Uh, Searing Smite. So, once you do this, it does 2d6 damage, and then it can take an additional d6 on the uh, if it fails a saving throw. So, that's, that's okay, uh, is I guess it's made a little bit better by the fact that you can you don't have to build into this with your paladin and take it as a spell. But searing smite, like even at second level, I still think I would rather just have hellish rebuke, man. Like, I yeah, um, I don't know. The smites I think at lower levels just kind of disappoint me, honestly. The branding smite, however, getting this at fifth level, being able to cast it at second level once per day is actually pretty good. The next time you hit a creature with a weapon attack before the spell ends, the weapon gleams with astral radiance as you strike. The attack deals an extra 2d6 radiant damage to the target, which becomes, an, which becomes visible if it is invisible, and the target sheds dim light in a 5-foot radius and can't become invisible until the spell ends. So, Branding Smite, I think if you're able to like do this to a ghost or like an invisible stalker, you're able to get this off, it's I mean, this makes, like, the, the most scary part of that combat essentially, like, null and void. The, the problem is just kind of getting it to land. So I would say with this, go into town, buy a bag of flour, and then as soon as an invisible creature is up there trying to fight you or do whatever, just throw the flour on it. G g yeah, that's, it's a classic, classic D&D trick. Woo! Okay, so I think that is all of the sub-races. Hopefully and that was uh, as concise as I can be. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions on that. But let's go over into the new and improved Racing Class Energy Analysis Table. I've had a lot of people request, uh, not just on YouTube, but also on Reddit for me to make this public once again. Uh, I am working to make that happen. I'm, it, it's almost there. It's just not quite in its final state just yet. Uh, I, I'm doing some final checks, making sure, and then I, I will make it public. I do promise that. Uh, one of the new things I've added here, and some of you may have already seen this P rating, uh, that P is a new one that I've added. It means preeminent. I think that this pairing in particular, and this is some personal opinion also coming into play here, is that not only is this S+, plus, but I think that this pair in particular, there's something in the race that does something specific for the like core subclass feature that makes me think that this is something really special that shouldn't be ignored and quite possibly the best pairing in the game. Uh, this isn't necessarily OP, it's still within like mechanical game balance, uh, but this is something like Champion Fighter critting on a 19 to 20, and then Savage Attacker from the half orc directly enhancing that. So you do more damage, it's a lot easier for you to do that damage, or like Leonin and Conquest Paladin being able to inflict the Frightened Condition in another way. It, something that directly enhances the strongest features of the subclass. Oh, and I also fixed some freeze pain stuff. So, as you can see on here, uh, it moves around and it keeps all of the stats here for you guys to see a lot easier. I thought that would be a nice quality of life change for these videos. So, the base tiefling, the tech balance gave it a 23. I'm likely to agree with that. And as you can see from my ratings, I just don't think that there's a perfect... Like, this is the problem with having intelligence and charisma as your ASI. Uh, there's just nothing that really goes in here that... Um, directly synergizes with like that ability score improvement and um, yeah if I was to say that there was any one particular class that really really gets a boost from this uh, I do want to make mention though the D rating that I've given to them in Forge Domain uh, it's simply because because Tiefling gets resistance to fire damage in Forge Domain one of their strongest features is that they do get resistance to fire damage eventually immunity uh, I feel like that is so good of a resistance to get 
that I can't help but think that that's, that's something to at least knock it down one point for me. And they didn't really have anything else helping out the pairings, so that's why they're sitting at a D for detrimental. So yeah, for Tiefling, I, I, I mean, I would say go for the Charisma Caster if you're really wanting to make that work out. Uh, there's just nothing that I'm looking at that I'm thinking I would really recommend to go into. So for the Tiefling with Wings, though, we have a different story. Uh, if you get access to Cantrips, and you have like this infinite resource that you can use to basically completely stay out of melee range, then yeah, I will consider that OP. Uh, I, I don't think we would ever write a race that has a feature that says you are immune to melee weapon damage as long as you're not in a like a room with a, a 15 foot or lower ceiling, you know? Because that's really how we need to look at a fly speed is that that is immunity to melee weapon damage in like non-enclosed areas. So what I would say is, quite honestly, it's either Sorcerer, Warlock, or Bard. Uh, if you're wanting more damage, definitely go for the Sorcerer or Warlock. Uh, you're able to just stay up out of melee range and cast cantrips like crazy. I think Warlock is probably the best at that just because of Eldritch Blast. Bard also can get access to it. Uh, that cantrip is just so, so good. The ability to do force damage like that. Uh, but Warlock is the only way that you can actually enhance the cantrip, so... Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with Warlock as probably the strongest racing class pairing for the Winged Tiefling. So, sorry if you can hear the fireworks going off right now. Uh, in Oklahoma, apparently the 4th of July doesn't end until August. So, uh, Anyways, so looking at Feral Tiefling, I think my favorite pairing for this has got to be Arcane Trickster. Uh, mostly because I just love, love, love that subclass. Uh, direct synergy, the intelligence and dexterity. You're more able to do all your rogue stuff. Uh, I think especially there for Arcane Trickster. Your plus one to intelligence, even though that's where you get your spell casting, you're, getting, you're still going to do a lot of your martial damage with your dexterity. So Arcane Trickster for me has got to be the preeminent pairing for the Feral Tiefling. Eldritch Knight is another one that I'm like, okay, a ranged Eldritch Knight, Feral Tiefling is going to do fantastic. I think Blood Hunter is interesting because uh, there's not a whole lot of races that actually give you dexterity and intelligence, and uh, Blood Hunter is really, really begging for that for a ranged Blood Hunter. The Valuable Tiefling, I, I would, all I really say is, same thing, probably Warlock is going to be your best bet with this. Uh, mostly, that's just based off of the strength of Eldritch Blast and not much else. They just don't really have, like I said, really apparent synergy with much of anything. So for the Dissipator Tiefling, I would say that Bard is likely the preeminent pairing for this. Uh, Bard in particular because you're getting the boost to your spellcasting, uh, the help to your strong save, and I would say if there was a homebrew one that I was probably to give this one the preeminent one to, possibly Merchant, uh, because with the Merchant, the fact that you can cast Detect Thoughts, uh, pretty easy to tell if someone's swindling you, uh, that might be my personal pick, really. Other than that, I might say Magus or... Yeah, probably Magus, but I'm going to run and say that this Vader might actually be my favorite pick for my own homebrew class. So for the Fierna Tiefling, you're getting a little bit of help to your wisdom, uh, but it's suffering the same problems as the base Tiefling, uh, in that wisdom and charisma just aren't really a super synergetic pairing for many, many builds. But yeah, so this might be another one that just be like auto-pick Warlock if you're just looking to build like a really strong class for that race. Glassy and Tiefling, I gave a bit of a bump because they get invisibility, and that helps out with a lot of scouts. Uh, particularly helps out the Rogue, because Rogue getting invisibility at least once per day means that you are almost guaranteed to get your sneak attack damage off at least once. So for that, I would say that the Swashbuckler is likely the preeminent pairing for the tief uh, Glassy and Tiefling. Just, yeah, helping out with your Rakish Audacity. So due to that, I would likely say that the Swashbuckler is a preeminent pairing for Glassy and Tiefling, although Bard is a very, very nice contender to that. Next up for Levistus, I... It, Armor of Agathus is huge. It really is. Ray of Frost, though, being able to slow something down and be able to catch up to it and hit it with something, like to make a melee attack, makes me really think that Paladin is where Lavista's Tiefling is going to shine. You're not just doing Armor of Agathus, you're doing it at second level, which is incredible, incredible. Armor of Agathus, if it chips off seven hit points and you deal ten to it, something else chips off the other three, and you do ten to it, like, that's, that's really, really sweet. Uh, if you do take Paladin down, I think it's Oath of Conquest that gets Armor of Agathus, uh, that you're just able to cast it even more, but once per day you get it as a second level, like, spell slot for free. 
That's fantastic. Uh, Armor of Agathis really helps out this pairing in particular. So I will save a little bit of time here. The Mammon and the Mephistopheles Tiefling, those are going to be about the same as the base Tiefling. The Zerial Tiefling is going to really, really shine in Frontline Charisma, so that's going to be Paladin. Uh, just getting access to the Smites, so that way you don't have to actually take them through your Paladin itself. Those Smites are available at second level once per day for free, so it's pretty fantastic. Charisma helping out your spellcasting, Strength helping out your just Frontline Martial Damage, Awesome, awesome, awesome. And then the Wing Feral Tiefling, uh, all the OPs that you're seeing on here is just because those get access to cantrips. This has access to 30 feet of fly speed. Uh, however, now we have a dexterity improvement as well as an intelligence improvement. So Wizard in particular is getting a lot of love here. I would say that very likely Wing Feral Tiefling Wizard, just having those cantrips that it can cast at range is insane, insane, insane. Uh, Artificer is also a, a big, big spotlight there. Uh, but anything that gets access to cantrips is immediately bumped up a few points in my book. So this is explaining what the ratings actually mean in my system. You, know, you can see the explanation and then any notes I might have felt were necessary to explain something. And then I have some notable explanations over here for what specific feats, uh, features actually influence my rating. So let me zoom that in for you guys. Okay, you guys can see that fairly well. Pause it whenever you like. And that is going to do it for Tiefling on this video. Uh, thank you guys so much for being here. What do you think about my explanations? This is going to be a long, super long video. I already know it. But hey, this is a really in-depth race. So yeah, leave your thoughts down in the comment section below. I really love all the discussion we've been having. Thank you guys so much for being here. I hope you all are staying safe, staying healthy, and I can't wait to see you in the next one.